we are torn up in ourselves, nobody else even around, by guilt and by untold diversities of anxieties and amorphous instabilities. <laughs> Choose your word. Bad feelings that have no reason for being there. We're just torn up by these. What do you do with them? You believe the promises. And here's the sweet text. This is Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. And the opposite of anxiety is peace, so have peace. Paul, Paul's saying enjoy peace. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In other words, roll, roll the anxieties, give them to God. Tell him just exactly how you feel. God knows you can't pull the wool over God's eyes. Just tell him how you've got doubts. Tell him how you've got guilt. Tell him how you've got anxieties. Tell him how crummy and, and non-Christian you feel. And just roll it. Just roll it onto him. And then listen. And the peace, this is verse 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know what he's saying there? He's saying, you're under attack, friend. What's this guard business? Why, why would you need to be guarded by peace? Because you've got an enemy in here and out there, and he wants to destroy your peace at any cost, by any means, with any kind of unsettled feeling. And you know what? All the rational things you can come up with confirm your loss of peace. Of course I shouldn't have peace. Here are the ten reasons my reason can provide. That's why he says, above all reason. <laughs> there will be moments when your fear, your anxiety, your sense of guilt is totally rational and warranted as far as you can tell, what will you do then? Sometimes, and Paul Tripp pointed out one time that we got to beware of our inner lawyer coming to our defense too quickly. We got another one. Namely, a prosecuting attorney. There's two lawyers in me. Oh, I'm good at defending myself, big time. He kicks into action lots. Oh, there's another one. He goes into action at 5 a.m., 6. What do you do? With prayer and supplication, and thanksgiving, you tell him, you tell God, your friend, your friend, he's not the issue here, <laughs> he's your friend, and you tell him what's going on, and you ask him, and the peace of God, I have experienced, I'm 65 years old, this is not new to me, and it doesn't get easier, sorry about that. But about, about 54 years of doing this, he's faithful. I'm a Christian. I'm standing here. Exhibit A. I'm loving this moment. I'm loving you. I'm loving the gospel. I'm loving Christmas. I'm loving Jesus. Why? He came. A thousand times he came. And he set up guard around this so fickle head and heart of mine. It's my only hope. Why are you going to be a Christian when you wake up tomorrow? Not you. Because God shows up in the morning fighting for you, not against you. 
So many guilt, so many worries, so many threats, so many confusions, so many uncertainties, and so much rational support they get from our brain. I am thankful for the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. And inexplicably, 10 a.m., 3 a.m., or 3 p.m., it's, it's better. It's better. <laughs> now do that this Christmas. Roll, roll it tonight. Just roll it. Take all the stuff and roll it. Get alone for a few minutes and just roll it off of you onto him and ask for that. Say, God, I've got relationships to deal with, which is where we're going right now. I gotta know some measure of peace because I can't walk into this without knowing it's okay here and it's okay here. <laughs>